from Indianapolis with an eye on every corner of Indiana. This is IBJ Media's Inside Indiana Business with Gary Dick. Presented by Ice Miller and Indiana University. Soaring high into Summit City. What's driving growth in Fort Wayne, the domino effect rippling through the region, and what's next for Northeast Indiana's economy? Plus, hemp in the Hoosier State. You can't legally buy pot here, but we found an Indiana business cashing in on cannabis big time. More in this week's Around Indiana. And how high-tech video games like this are helping Hoosiers deal with grief. Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick, coming to you from Fort Wayne, the scene this week of Engage Northeast Indiana, the latest in a series of events put on by IBJ Media, Inside Indiana Business, and the Indiana Economic Development Corporation, focusing on key issues driving regional economies around the state. More than 300 people filled the Grand Wayne Center in downtown Fort Wayne for an event that included a keynote from Secretary of Commerce Brad Chambers and really robust discussion on an economy on the move, fueled by more than $1 billion of investment in downtown Fort Wayne. Star Financial is building its new corporate headquarters here. There are new restaurants and retail offerings, including a Ruth's Chris and the $230 million plus first phase of the Electric Works project, all bolstering the big goal of increasing the regional population to 1 million residents by 2030. Secretary of Commerce Brad Chambers believes Northeast Indiana is poised for more growth. Fort Wayne as a community has really come together. They've been super focused as a community. They've come together a decade or more ago and it is paying off big time now. The momentum up here is incredible. Fastest growing community in the Great Lakes region, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Most educated community in the country or one of the most. Um, great place for retirees, low, low housing prices, their GDP is growing. This community has, has really worked hard and it is, it is showing up. Do it best, the $4 billion hardware co-op picked the Electric Works project as the site for its new global headquarters. CEO Dan Starr tells me the outlook for Northeast Indiana helped him sell the idea to his board of directors. You look at the economic activity and growth, in Northeast Indiana, and that's not just this last year, the last decade, uh, it just is a vibrant uh, community with a lot of growth potential and business movement. And so it's an attractor of, of people, of companies, and that, that is something that is also easy to sell to someone who is just looking at it as a business transaction. I, I have an emotional connection to Northeast Indiana. Uh, but these are folks who are just evaluating it on sort of the cold, the cold truth of what does that look like and, and why is this community better than, say, relocating to another state that also has a growing population. But there are challenges in Northeast Indiana, among them educational attainment, early childhood education, and affordable housing, an issue that uh, really has come to the forefront throughout the state of Indiana. The affordability gap on housing is, is, a, is a key issue. Uh, when you look at some of our smaller communities, and Stefan can talk a little bit more about this, the, just the, the, the number of units available. Uh, when you look at the aging population and not having people leave their homes and having turnover, uh, there's a challenge in workforce housing in a lot of our smaller communities. I think the READY program is something that has, has been a piece of that, and the Northeast Indiana RDA has awarded a, a couple of uh, uh, awards to some regional, regional housing initiatives up in LaGrange County and Huntington County. I'll have more from Fort Wayne and Northeast Indiana a little bit later in the show. We'll tell you about efforts to make Northeast Indiana an e-commerce hub and show you some big improvements at Fort Wayne International Airport. But first, you can't legally buy pot in Indiana, but you can make big bucks off of it. These would be vape products. Next, we go inside the Hoosier Hemp Company, cashing in on cannabis. Here's what's making news around Indiana. 
We've got 400 milligrams of HHC gummies. So this is three chai, this is orange dreamsicle. We've got Pineapple Express. Hey, who's your hemp producer raking in millions, even though it's still illegal to buy pot in Indiana? Believe it or not, one of the largest hemp companies in the country calls Indiana home. Three years ago, 3Chi moved its operations from Ohio to the Hoosier State. Why? According to 3Chi founder Justin Jornet, Indiana's innovative CBD laws set his company up for big time success. I caught up with Jornet earlier this week. When you hear the word cannabis, the connotation in pop culture looks a little something like this. Is that a joint, man? <laughs> Get some sour cream and onion chips. But the business of cannabis, surprisingly, is growing in Indiana. 3T is a hemp company, so we, we make oil uh, from cannabis. September 2019 was when we got our first lease here and, and you know, set up shop, started, started going full bore. Uh, and then just since then, we've kind of exploded. 3C is now one of the biggest hemp companies in the U.S. with an international customer base offering a wide range of edibles like baked goods and gummies, carbonated beverages, vape cartridges, oils, and the list goes on. So what is hemp exactly? And what's the difference between Delta 8 and Delta 9 THC? Delta 9 Delta THC. Delta 9 THC. Yep. What is that? I mean, it's comparable to... So Delta 9 THC is what people classically associate with marijuana. Uh, it's the active component in there. However, it can also be derived from hemp. And so if you take it from hemp and put it into a product that has less than 0.3% by dry weight mm -hmm. uh, in, in the final form, it can still be considered hemp and sold as hemp. And so essentially you can still have Delta 9 products, mm -hmm. which are what you would find in a marijuana dispensary in a hemp market. So this is comparable to what you'd find at a dispensary? Absolutely. And you can sell that legally here in Indiana. You, you can sell that legally here in Indiana. And you know, one of the big benefits is now you don't have to drive across the state. You don't have to get it from some shady guy in a dealer or in an alleyway or <laughs> something like that. But you can have tested product made here in Indiana. And it's it all derives just from it's cannabis. That's it's, that's it's, the overriding. It's cannabis at the end of the day, and hemp is cannabis, marijuana is cannabis. So that's why we can make similar products. But at the end of the day, this is derived from hemp. Thanks to 3 Cheese sponsoring popular sports media company Barstool Sports, its products were launched into the mainstream. And that's when NASCAR came calling. Well, Richard Childress Racing, they actually uh, had done some work with Barstool. This year, we sponsored Tyler Reddick. Uh, so that was the first mainstream cannabis sponsorship uh, in the country for, for, a, for a major sport. Uh, so that was very groundbreaking. And while 3 g was a hit with its mainstream NASCAR debut, it's still a hot button issue in Indiana. But one Journey says lawmakers should really consider. We had a uh, economic study done uh, a year or two ago, and the the market here in Indiana is two billion dollars. People are listening uh, at the state house, and I and I really hope that something comes to fruition out of that because Indiana is in a position where they could really dominate the cannabis space overall if we were to act, which seems crazy to, to say. You know, everybody says Colorado, uh, California, you know, they expect those guys to be the leaders. And, you know, right now they, they are, but, you know, just it's amazing what just good policy could do if it were implemented. Uh, you know, Indiana could be a real major player, really on the world scene, too. A fascinating conversation with 3 Chief founder Justin Dornay, definitely a company making waves. While also making news around Indiana, the city of Bloomington has found a buyer for the century-old Showers Brothers Furniture Factory Kiln Building. The city's redevelopment commission announced the Kiln Collective will pay $50,000 to acquire the building from the city and invest an additional $2 million to renovate the property over at least two phases. It's located next to the mill co-working space in Bloomington in the Trades District. It was originally part of the Shower Brothers Furniture Company complex and used for drying lumber that would later be milled into furniture. 
If you buy a real tree for Christmas, expect a higher price tag. A Purdue professor says prices are running as high as 24% over last year. Daniel Kasson says in addition to inflation and higher expenses for growers, the increase dates back to the drought in 2012. He says that's when many growers lost their young trees and even some mature trees, and that hit the marketplace hard. Kasson said the drought also led to a lot of growers leaving the market. If you lose all your trees and you're getting kind of elderly and you say, well, why, why start all over? Because it takes eight years, seven to eight years to produce that first tree once you start over. So that's part of the factor. The other factor is just uh, just the tightness of the market. We lost growers. There hasn't been a lot of money in the growing Christmas trees. Not a lot of people wanting to do it. So that just increased the tightness in the marketplace. Kasson says the Real Christmas Tree Board estimates about 28 million trees were in the ground in the United States in 2018, and in less than three years, that number increased about 25 percent to more than 40 million trees in 2021. He also says if you want to save some money picking those trees this year, choose a smaller tree. Dealing with grief over the holidays. IU researchers launching a study to help people who have lost loved ones and they need your help. Details when we come back. And a look ahead at this week's IBJ. Moondrops Distillery will open a tasting room this week in Fortville, plus a look inside the mission of the Kroc Institute for Tech Diplomacy at Purdue. And the Indianapolis Zoo has launched the public phase of a $53 million fundraising campaign. And don't forget to RSVP for IBJ CFO of the Year event to meet this year's honorees. It will be Friday, December 9th at the JW Marriott. Register by December 5th at IBJ.com. Grief can be especially heavy during the holiday season after losing a loved one. And a unique study is looking at how video games might help. This is of Health reporter Kylie Valletta is here with more. Kylie? Thanks, Mary Rachel. An interesting study. Health apps abound these days, but a team at IU Bloomington's Luddy School of Informatics is looking at one video game in particular and how it might help cope with grief. The game is called Grease, which means gray in Spanish, and has sold more than one million copies. Players interact with the storyline of a young woman lost in sorrow. Her world begins in black and white, and as the player completes each level of grief with her, a coinciding color is brought back to her world. Hoosiers who have recently lost a loved one can be in the study and the IU informatics team is analyzing what elements of the game are most helpful. IU assistant professor of informatics Dr. Christina Chung says the team can then suggest to developers what design elements work best for future technologies to support grief. This one has a very rich storylines. Um, it has the, you know, the theme, the color theme design, it has the music Right, and it, there's a lot of kind of interaction that people, the user can do with the game. So all, all of these are design decisions that one can make when they are designing an interactive technology. And we are hoping to learn, you know, what are some of this that maybe this game does right? Or what, what are some of things that actually is not great? And, and so if we are trying to design other technology, um, what are some of the things we can incorporate in future design? Chung says this gaming technology is not meant to replace therapies or getting help from professionals, but it could complement those things. The study is part of All In for Health, which helps enroll more Hoosiers in clinical studies. Ascension St. Vincent's $325 million expansion beginning to take shape. The health system breaking ground on a new brain and spine hospital at its northwest side Indianapolis campus. Construction on Ascension St. Vincent's new women and children's tower started in July. Valparaiso-based HealthLink celebrated the groundbreaking of a new clinic in Michigan City this week. HealthLink is investing $15 million in the facility near the Ivy Tech Community, Camp Community College campus. The organization formed a partnership with Ivy Tech to create a learning lab for students looking to enter the healthcare workforce. The clinic, which will be three times larger than its existing facility, should be finished in early 2024. 
the video game app. If you, we were talking in studio that you got to listen to some of the music. It is very, it's, it's lovely. I mean, it just, you could, you could almost feel the emotion in it. So I can't imagine what it would be like if you're actually playing the game. Right. So, so how, how does that work? I think you've mentioned over a million copies. Over a million copies have been sold. So it shows there's a market for it. But if you think about it, it, it seems a little odd at first, but yeah. there's apps for healthy eating. There's apps for exercising. There's apps for our mental health, for mindfulness. And uh, the researcher was explaining, this is just another another element of our mindfulness, of our well-being as people who are dealing specifically with grief. And it's very artistic. It's almost I, I likened it to almost like going to an art museum and looking at art it's, it can be soothing so it's it's just fascinating how technology is completely transforming all areas of health really it, it, it was is beautiful it, it, is it really beautiful. was you know and did she say how you use it? You mentioned right. it being a video game. It's interactive, so it's not something you could just do on your phone. It's you, you really need to immerse yourself and be able to interact, and so it's a game. So you need to use a game control and really kind of get into the experience of it. That's incredible, Kylie. Thank you. Thank you. Time now to go inside innovation. Indianapolis-based tech firm Zylo lands another huge investment and received a $31.5 million in growth capital from a mix of investors. Zylo's platform helps companies manage their software subscriptions. Zylo launched out of Indianapolis-based venture studio High Alpha in 2016 and has raised more than $66.5 million in funding. Founding clients include Adobe, DoorDash, Slack, Yahoo, and Salesforce. Indiana is known for being one of the top 10 manufacturing states in the country, and now Purdue is teaming up with Ireland-based Accenture to prepare students on how to get their arms around smart manufacturing. Accenture, which is a professional services company, will establish a smart factory on the West Lafayette campus and create a scholars program. It's time now for our Eye on Education, brought to you by PNC Bank. Purdue University says SAT and or ACT's test scores will be required for students applying for the fall 2024 semester. The university had previously made test scores optional due to the pandemic. Purdue says the announcement was made now to allow current high school juniors to reschedule their exams in order to submit the results with their applications. While the test scores had been optional since 2020 because the pandemic may have prevented students from accessing a testing site, Purdue says nearly three-fourths of applications provided their results anyway. Applications for fall 2024 will be accepted beginning August 1st, 2023. In Angola, Trine University says its class of 2022 saw 99.5% of its members found a job within six months of graduation. Trine's employment rate for its graduates is more than 15% higher than the most recent national figures. Trine's Frank School of Education announced earlier this fall that 100% of its graduates seeking teaching positions have now been employed for seven straight years. And at Ivy Tech Bloomington, after 25 years on campus, Chancellor Jenny Vaughn says she will retire next year. She served as Chancellor in Bloomington since 2014. During Vaughn's tenure, the Bloomington campus expanded beyond the city's limits to offer career certification courses in Bedford, Nashville, and Ivy Tech Mooresville. She also added key programs on campus, including a pathway to licensure on automated technology programs at the Monroe County Airport and guaranteed admissions programs. Vaughn also led two capital campaigns that raised nearly $15 million. Next, we return to Gary in Fort Wayne, where the power of flight is helping to fuel the Allen County economy, especially when it comes to e-commerce. Plus, a preview of this week's Business and Beyond podcast and the biggest challenges facing museums in this day and age. That notion of, of competition, but also that balance between investing in infrastructure and um, taking risks on creating something new. More with Jennifer Pace Robinson, the woman running the largest children's museum in the world right here in central Indiana. You can find Gary's conversation with her starting Monday at InsideIndianaBusiness.com. Welcome back to the show from Fort Wayne in the heart of Allen County, Northeast Indiana, where efforts are underway to make this region an e-commerce hub. Amazon is investing in a big way here, and there are major improvements at Fort Wayne International Airport. First, the evolution of the airport. 
and the West Terminal expansion completed in March. It includes two new passenger gates and get this glass passenger boarding jet bridges, something you really don't see every day. Gates five through seven currently being renovated. Fort Wayne International also recently opened its terminal drive after it went un underwent a major facelift. Well, connecting the airport to e-commerce also part of the economic strategy in Fort Wayne. Late last year, Amazon opened a huge new fulfillment center near the airport, creating hundreds of new jobs. Amazon also building a large distribution center on the west side of Fort Wayne, just uh, a little over 10 miles from the airport. 1,000 people expected to work there. What happened with Amazon is that primarily they choose where they go because they already do the due diligence. So the question is, if we're good enough for one of the top end um, centers for Amazon, that you know we could be good for so many others that are just basically on par. So they validate the market yeah. and the ability to serve as a e-commerce hub for us. So it's a you know beyond investment, the you know the macro approval you know s speaks volumes. Certainly e-commerce and distribution logistics, an emerging sector of the economy here in Northeast Indiana. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show from Fort Wayne. It's been a real treat to be in Northeast Indiana. I'm Gary Dick. Go out and make it a successful week.